Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. Time for Coffee with PC again this week. Sorry about last week. I missed it. Um, we were up in the hospital with Denise having her surgery, but I'm back this week kind of sort of in the swing of things and sort of with my coffee. Actually, this is an interesting story about the coffee. Um, Price and I, we debate when we're ordering new stuff, what to try. We have this one company out of Atlanta called Portrait Coffee that we order from time to time. We were looking at the coffees they offered, and this one is called Award Tour, I believe is something like that. And, and we were reading the description and it says, imagine a blue raspberry Jolly Rancher, which doesn't sound like something that works with coffee, but Price said, you know, now I have to try that. And so we ordered it and uh, we both decided it was a mistake. Not the biggest fan, but we got to get through <laughs> these uh, it was a small bag we ordered just to try it out for a novelty sake. Probably will not be ordering that one again. So for anybody who said, I always say, I always like everything of coffee, there's one. Not a big fan of that. I guess Blue Raspberry Jolly Rancher and coffee definitely aren't my cup of tea, if I can mix every metaphor imaginable there. Hey, it is Wednesday, and uh, just to give you a quick update, like I said, I didn't miss last week because um, Denise had her surgery on Tuesday. Everything went really well. We were a little over a week from that, and she's recovered and recovering pretty well. Um, been to see her one of her surgeons on Monday, goes tomorrow to see another one of her surgeons, and there'll be lots of different things that are going on, but, but she's feeling pretty good, all things considered. Um, you know, getting a little more strong every day, able to do a little bit more every day. It'll be quite a, a lengthy recovery, and then there'll be some things we have to, to do, go through some more hoops next, but thank you for all of your prayers for her, for all of your concern for her uh, over the last, certainly since last November when we started this journey, but over the last week since she's been dealing with this. So many of you have, have been so kind, uh, brought food or flowers or, or just sent cards, and we're very grateful for that, to know we have such uh, so many people that are concerned and praying for us, and we are very grateful to God for his, his, just his goodness to us more than we deserve and how he's working physically in her life and body. And we're, we're very grateful for that. So I wanted to, to give you that just real quick update. Things are, are, are looking good and she's doing pretty well. Hopes to be kind of back into a little bit of the groove in the next week or so. So you might see her back with the kids and some other things next Sunday. So that would be great. Um, wanted to mention as well, I hope if you weren't able to be here on Sunday, maybe you saw our stream. We had a really great treat this past Sunday, and so I wanted to spend a few minutes focusing on that. We had um, a couple of our International Mission Board missionaries, Eric and Lucy, who are serving in Southern Europe right now, working uh, with a variety of people um, there through that ministry. It's really remarkable to hear them tell. He told a story or two in our service on Sunday about some of the things that he's done um, and, and how God has used them in that ministry. And I'm reminded, you know, you meet this young couple, little two-year-old daughter they have, and, and, and think about, you know, they were willing to we, we, you know, we often think of the American dream, you know, buy the home, have the family, do all that. And they were willing to, to put all that aside because they felt God calling them. And they're, they're living in it on another, on another continent, ministering in, in some amazing ways. And they're one of several thousand missionaries that we, through our convention of churches, send out to share the gospel. And, and a lot of them, like, like uh, Eric and Lucy, their focus is on the unreached pre peoples of the world, people that have little or no as openness or, or ability or interaction with hearing the good news about Jesus, whether it's because of culture or geography or whatnot. Lots of reasons factor in there. There's actually something that's called the 1040 window that has to do with the this, this swath across North Africa into the, the Middle East and Asia that is the most unreached more unreached peoples live in that 1040 window than just about anywhere else on earth. And I don't know if you caught it on Sunday, but Eric mentioned, and this statistic really blew me away, 2.8 billion, 2.8 billion with a B people that have no access to the gospel, that, that it hasn't penetrated their culture. You know, we, obviously 7, 8 billion people, population of the world, our, our country 330 million. So almost 10 times the population of the United States. Not quite that, I guess uh, maybe nine times or so. The population of the United States don't have access to the gospel. You know, we, 
we come to church, those of you who are part of our church or other churches, we have uh, avenues like this to, to do midweek check-ins. We have small group studies that meet in churches and in homes and, and all in, in, in our sort of normal life. The, the fact you can drive down the street of most any city in Florida and you're going to probably run across a church or two and you get to the downtown and you've usually got some of the, the big old school original first baptist first methodist first presbyterian kind of that traditional downtown city square some of those early uh people that started those ministries uh, those churches there we, we kind of take that for granted and to think that 2.8 billion people in the world would aren't going to hear about jesus if if, if he were to return today if, if he were to return and, and history was to end and, and the next step of, of God's plan were to happen, 2.8 billion people would have never even had the opportunity to hear the message of the gospel, much less respond to it. That, that's an overwhelming need when I think about it. But I'm so grateful for people like Eric, for missionaries like he and his wife, Lucy, who are following the call of God to do that. You know, we've been looking at Acts, and, and it, it's that call that that Paul had when he gave uh, his life to Christ having been met on the Damascus road by the way Acts 22 he tells that story again we'll get there in a week or two that transformed his life and the rest of his life was devoted to doing whatever it took to get the message of Jesus out and so I hope you were encouraged to meet them on Sunday to hear a little bit about their ministry and to know that as part of our church and part of our convention of churches, you have a part in seeing the gospel go out. Let, let me just remind you, uh, if you weren't here, of the three kind of action steps that, that he gave us at the end. And, and these, are, these are not original with him. I've heard these. Um, I think this is kind of our mission board uh, reminder of things that we can do. Three steps. Pray, give, and go. Pray, give, go. Um, how can you be involved in missions? You can pray. You know? We live a long way from Southern Europe. We live a long way from that 1040 window across North Africa, the Middle East, and into Asia. You know, that, that's not where we live. But though we might be physically bound by where our, our roots are here, we're not spiritually bound. God has given us the privilege of prayer. We can pray for people groups in that window that don't have access to the gospel, that God would raise up people and, and, and provide openings to get the gospel to those. Maybe some of you got that little booklet that he had, he, he and his wife were passing out of people groups that you could pray for. I think it was one a week or something like that. Unreached people groups. Um, so we can, we can pray no matter where we are, no matter what our vocation, all of us can pray. So I encourage you, I don't know how you plan your prayer time, how much you pray, if you pray, uh, have a list, a, a journal, a notebook, but if you could just make a note, if you could add to your prayer list, um, maybe you'd add specifically Eric and Lucy and, and Margo, their daughter. Maybe you'd add specifically uh, missionaries in general. Maybe, and maybe you'd add specifically some of those unreached peoples in the world asking God to, to penetrate with the gospel, the life-changing message of Jesus to those places. Pray, give was the second thing. Now, hey, church world and giving kind of go together, right? It's, it's kind of a cliche um, about church. You know, it's kind of a negative stereotype, quite honestly, for people who aren't a part of church, that they think the church is always asking for money. Um, and, and it can feel like that if that's not the case. But what we know as believers in Jesus is that giving is an act of worship. You know, we gather on Sundays and we, we, ha we call it a worship service and there's, there's music and there's, there's a Bible preaching. You know, we open the word, we hear something about that. We, we pray together. Maybe we, we do different things in that arena. Um, but giving is an act of worship. It, worship is to ascribe ultimate value and worth to God, to, to, to let God know how much he's worth to you. And giving is a way of saying, you know, as, as Jesus himself said, you cannot serve both God and money or God and mammon. It, it's easy in the rat race of our life to, to chase that American dream I mentioned earlier, to, to look at, at the bottom line, at the bank account, at the retirement account, at the stock portfolio, whatever you've got that, that it can be a total source of security for you. But giving is a way that God has given us that reminds us that ultimately he owns it all. He's just entrusted to us whatever portion we have to manage in our life here. And giving is an act of worship to acknowledge God as the giver of all that we have 
and and to worship him by saying you know or this is just a reminder that you are worth more than any bank account than you are worth more than any security i find in money so giving is that and, and let me say this i love this line i want to say i got it from maybe andy stanley or somebody else uh, that i heard in a sermon but it goes like this giving is not god's way of raising money giving is god's way of raising christians so god's way of in our life building into us his character I've used the, the line a lot. The, one of the most well-known Bible verses, for God so loved the world that he did what? John three sixteen. he gave. In this case, he gave his only begotten son. So we can have the heart of God and love the world when we give. And, and you know, missionaries that go around the world, um, they've got expenses, they've got needs, and giving is a way that we do. Every time we collect an offering, we send a percentage to our mission board so that they can continue to support missionaries like Eric and Lucy and others, are for over 4,000 through our International Mission Board, not to mention our um, North American Mission Board. So giving is an act of worship. It identifies us and, and, and builds the character of God in us. And it's, it's like God so loved the world that he gave. Our giving is a way to express love to the world. So we pray for those places and people that don't know God and, and haven't had access to the gospel of Jesus. We give as an act of worship and, and as identifying with God's heart for the world. And then the third one is we go. Now, Maybe it doesn't mean go over to Europe. Maybe it doesn't mean go over to Asia. Maybe it doesn't mean go to that 1040 window, but we can go. So, you know, the first word of the Great Commission is what? Go, at least in our most English translations. Go and make disciples of all nations. To go, it's actually a participle. I think I've mentioned this as well. And a better translation isn't like a command go, but it, it, it's, it's better translated as you go or wherever you go. That, that our life is to be spent going. So when you go to work, yes, you go to work, you have, you have a job, you have a assignment, you have a boss to answer to, you have different um, things that you have to do, but you're also, you also have a heavenly boss that says, wherever you go and as you go, make disciples, be, be a witness, see how God could use you in that place. So going is, is what we do every day, wherever we go. But there's also opportunities to go on specific mission trips. We've done some through our church. Uh, we didn't go very far. We went to, to North Central Florida for one several years ago. We've gone a little further. We've gone down to Cuba. We've gone down to Guatemala. We've gone uh, various places. We've gone to Uruguay um, when Denise's sister and brother-in-law were down there years ago. We, we've gone, and we haven't, you know, obviously the... The, the travel things over the last couple of years, we haven't planned any, but, but I'm sure you're gonna hear about some opportunities to go. May not be big expensive trips way far away, might be a little closer to home, but, but maybe there's somebody in our church or listening to this that God is putting on your heart to go, maybe a long way. And if that's the case, I encourage you, just like we heard from the story of our missionaries that felt the call of God and went, when God calls, follow that calling. God can use you remarkably and amazingly when we, when we just listen to his voice and go as he sends us. So find opportunities to go. If you want a mission trip, like they said, there are, there are websites. The IMB website has projects, has trips that you can be on. And we're going to look at putting together some in the next year for our church as well so that we'll give you opportunities to do that. So be on the lookout for that. So pray, give, and go. Three good things. Pray, give, go. How you can in your own life, wherever you are, be a part of God's mission. And this, after all, it is the Great Commission. It's our number one assignment. As we continue through Acts, we're going to be reinforcing that chapter after chapter, story after story in Paul's life. And hopefully at the end, we'll look back and go, you know, maybe we've gotten distracted by some less important things and missed the main thing. And that is seeing the gospel of Jesus that transformed my life when I placed my faith in him and found forgiveness, transformed, I hope, your life when you did the same, also calling us to help others come to know the same salvation that we have. As always, if you have a topic you'd like me to talk about, you can drop it in the comments, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or, or through our website, post in a lot of different places this, this Coffee with PC video every week. So hit me up and I'll do my best to answer. So until next time, I hope you have a great Wednesday, a great west, rest of your week, and uh, find a place that you can worship with a group of believers on Sunday. Take care.